when we're talking about the maternity and paternity leave act of 2023 one thing that um, i don't think necessarily was picked up in the online discussion you know this law was being hailed as a very progressive piece of legislation and it is in fact a very progressive piece of legislation but one fact that people uh, missed on was that this act only applies to establishments private and government establishments that are under the administrative control of the federal government so because after the 18th amendment uh, labor law is now under the sole jurisdiction of the provinces um this law will not apply to any establishments uh, which are under the control uh, of the uh, provincial government or private establishments um in the provinces the one um i think caveat here or the one sort of thing to note here is that um and i'll address um sort of laws that are prevalent in the other jurisdictions as well is that when there is a law in sind called the sind maternity benefits act of 2018 um there were some reports that uh, financial institutions in sind were not allowing um their female employees or granting female employees maternity leave because the argument was that we operate in a sector um, that's regulated by the federal government so um this language that's used in the act now that the act covers all entities that are under the administrative control of the federal government means now that the financial services industry will also gets covered wherever it is in pakistan but other than that it's important to note that this act only covers um establishments which are in islamabad capital territory in areas that are under the control of the federal government or in establishments all across pakistan which are directly under the administrative control of the federal government um so this is something that's important to note uh, that you know this law is still very uh, limited in its scope but the good thing is that when such progressive legislations um are passed at the federal level usually they do spill over into um the provinces sindh is the only other um province in pakistan that has a maternity benefits act that covers um private organizations um which is the sindh maternity benefits act of 2018 um which grants um four weeks of maternity leave prior to the delivery of the child and three months of maternity leave after the delivery of the child now coming back to this particular act this act allows um expectant mothers to avail maternity leaves uh, three times over their lifetime so the for the first child they can avail up to six months for the second child they can avail up to four months and for the third child they can avail up to uh, three months and then similarly expectant fathers can avail paternity leaves um over the course of their life three times over the course of their life and it's um ni- uh, 90 days 3 months and both uh, the both parents uh, can avail maternity leaves at full pay um then the second of uh, the law essentially um so this obligation is imposed on all private employers public employers and um the penalty that has been play- put place uh, placed in this act is um a fine up to rupees 100000 or imprisonment um uh, of up to 6 months or both now um hum uh, we it's important to kind of note right now that we don't necessarily because this law has just been passed there are no rules or regulations that have been um framed so far so we there's no mechanism in place to you know ensure that how the, will this law be you know complied with what will be the implementation procedures how will the government facilitate employers how will it ensure that you know compliance is being done how how will it support any complainants to uh, come forward what will be the uh, you know grievance redressal mechanism in fact this law doesn't even address which will be a competent court of jurisdiction to take cognizance of offenses under this act so for now in terms of you know how will this act or what will be the uh, uh, what will be the effects of this act or you know how effective this act will be we don't know yet because you know there are no rules or regulations framed under so there is no way for us to assess um the efficacy of this act or to ascertain whether you know any enforcement or facilitation or implementation mechanisms uh whether you know they're effective in um achieving the objective of this particular act um j- talking about the general uh, landscape of maternity benefits across um pakistan 
um so for example punjab there is a uh, punjab maternity benefits ordinance but that is only limited to workers so women workers so uh, women that fall in the, under the unskilled uh, category who work in factories who work in you know lay, uh, positions that are classified as labor positions uh, similarly the same applies in balochistan and um uh, khyber pakhtunkhwa Sindh is the only other uh, province that has a maternity benefits act but once again uh, paternity benefits are not applicable in sense for private legislation uh, i think in 2019 the sindh government allowed paternity benefits for up to paternity leave for up to 10 days for all sindh government employees but um, those benefits have yet not been extended to um, uh, expectant fathers in private establishments in sindh so basically this is the general overall um, view of where we are in terms of where uh, the law is for maternity and paternity leave in pakistan there has to be clear language within the laws that no employer can you know um, terminate an employee or issue a terminate uh, termination notice or discriminate against any expectant mother or any any employee who wants to uh, avail maternal maternity or paternity leave um there has to be specific language in the law that you know places a specific obligation against which then complaints can be made um we have seen that the courts have um upheld these principles so for example uh, the islamabad high court in a judgment 2021 judgment doc, uh, called dr amna salim khan versus nast very explicitly said um i'll just quickly go over the facts of the case in that case um this uh, woman the petitioner dr amna salim khan had uh, was a professor associate professor at nast and had requested for maternity leave which was approved but later it was communicated to her that you know she should resign or she would be terminated so she you know approached the sambad high court and the sambad high court um, looked at all the domestic legislation and looked all the international legislation around the issue and held that um, this is an uh, this is an discriminatory act this is an act in violation of the fundamental rights of the petitioner and then the islamabad high court issued certain directions of you know around the issue of maternity leave and one of that direction was that no employer um, can terminate an employee on account of them being on while they're on maternity leave or if they have requested maternity leave neither can a notice of termination be issued to them while you know they're expecting and why or they when they request maternity leave so this is a principle that has been recognized by the courts in pakistan but it's something that requires legislative sanction as well once you put something um in a piece of law you place an obligation then it's also easier for courts to enforce this as well right now you know uh, we've seen that there are some very progressive like uh, pieces of pro- progressive judgments around this issue uh from different courts in the country but once you've given it a legislative cover it makes it easier for uh, for um you know in uh, to place enforcement mechanisms in place to place monitoring mechanisms in place and for the courts to rely on those legislative provisions and to ensure that you know no rights are being violated uh once again the daycare centers act while you know a positive piece of legislation um only extends to the islamabad capital territory so one you know that that's an important uh, distinction or you know an important fact to make note of the other thing is that these regulations or uh, sort of these standards for quality these standards for monitoring they generally come through rules and regulations and because no rules and regulations have been enacted yet we don't necessarily know how the government plans um to regulate um this um regulate uh, under this law however um there is um a guide available by the punjab women development department that uh, provides a guideline for how take care centers in punjab are uh, supposed to be established and i think that a document is a good guideline of how generally day care centers should be established so that document speaks about you know the size of the building the facilities to be provided um generally what kind of um amenities should kids have the what kind of individuals should be employed in day care centers so i think that document is a good guideline and i think a similar document will need to be developed at the federal level and then once again an an enforcement mechanism will need to be developed um and under the uh, rules and regulations will need to be framed to make sure that you know the goal of the act which is to provide uh, 
you know women or increase their you know access to you know employment by ensuring the daycare facilities are available at workplaces so that overarching goal will only be met when the daycare facilities are provided are not only up to standard but are also um the a you know the first thing is provision of those daycare facilities and then to ensure that they're working according to acceptable international standards um so this is something that we can only assess once um you know rules and regulations have been framed right now we don't know necessarily if the government intends to provide support to businesses or if they do how do they plan to do that um a few ways where the governments can provide support is obviously through direct financial incentives or through tax incentives or in fact through maybe a financial incentives to parents to you know ensure that if there is a and there is a financial burden of establishing daycares that you know that is being shared equally between parents and between employers so you know we've seen like globally you know parents get um direct financial incentives um so that you know they can essentially ensure that you know they don't have to make a choice between raising their children and being part of the workforce so tax incentives to employers direct financial incentives to employers and then direct financial incentives to parents are some of the ways through which governments can um incentivize the establishment of daycares but once again um we will have to wait on the regulations or rules to ensure, to see if whether the government plans on doing something so you know the other aspect that when we need to talk about um when we talk about why you know we need to have facilities like daycare is to essentially increase women's access to the workplace or you know to encourage um women to work because when women have children then the choice inevitably comes down to whether they're going to stay home to raise their kids or whether they're going to join the workforce back and now essentially if you don't have facilities like daycares eventually women will then quit the workforce because you know children also need um you know supervision and they need they need to have obviously you know they need a parent to look after them um we have um you know there is while there is no necessarily study on pakistan and whether the effects of you know having a gender diverse workforce but there is adequate research available at the global level that indicates that having a more gender diverse workforce increases uh, the profitability of profitability of companies and improves decision making in companies um increases overall um reputations of companies um in fact with, with in pakistan's context there is an imf report that says it increased uh, female uh, participation in the workforce uh, there is potential for an increase in pakistan's gdp of about 30% so we need to necessarily when we you know make this conversation broader to see that you know when you're providing women um facilities that will help and or encourage them to stay in the workforce it eventually reaps benefits for not only these employers but also for the country's economy as a whole so we the government and the employers should be looking to you know facilitate women through you know establishing of course daycare centers for establishing facilities or providing women you know transport you know which is one of the biggest issues why sometimes a lot of women don't necessarily or make with the workplace and other specific you know facilities that women may require to have a safe workplace to have a healthy and you know um secure work environment because at the end of the day it does benefit the companies themselves and the country's economy so when we're looking at daycare centers i think it's important to think about it from that perspective as well that you know it's a it's an investment that the employer is making or the government is making so if the government is providing financial incentives to parents or to employers or you know providing tax breaks to employers it is not um it has to be thought in terms of an investment that the uh, government is making uh in the economy of the country in the long term um so one thing obviously um you know for example the law itself the law that we're discussing the take care act only places an obligation for establishment of daycares on um uh, business entities which have 70 or more employees so there's an inherent recognition that you know small enterprises don't necessarily have the financial bottom line to provide facilities like these um so one you know um there is that recognition that you know this is something that only maybe some of the larger employers can do and then once again as i said before um the balancing act will have to come through one a you know assessing basing the placing the obligation on 
certain companies um and then recommending that smaller companies maybe do this as part of like a policy in overall policy initiative and then once again the ba- it has to obviously because you have to incent incentivize parents or incentivize women to be you know remain part of the workforce it is you know unfortunate that you know women in pakistan make up about 49% of pakistan's population but only about 20 to 23% of the of women are part of the workforce um so we have about 20 um not that we have about you know 26% of women who um are necessarily not directly contributing to the economy that doesn't mean that we undermine their contributions uh, the labor that they're providing at home uh, but we just based on those those numbers we have like half of your female population uh, no uh, about se- actually 77 of your female population that's not a part of the workforce and there is huge potential there so we were so the balancing act obviously will come through as i said you know incentivizing employers through tax breaks through direct uh, monetary incentive and then providing maybe direct financial incentives to parents to ensure that they don't uh, to or especially to mothers to make sure that they don't quit the workforce and that they continue being part of the workforce so essentially um it is um it's a difficult task because we're also in a going through a time of economic crunch so you know it make it it's not necessarily maybe on the top of priority list of a lot of you know our key policy makers but it's something that's very very important and it's something that needs to be taken a look at so talking about progressive judgments uh, regarding this issue there's also a judgment of the lahore high court uh, lahore high court uh, it's called sobia nazir versus province of punjab uh where um this uh petitioner was not granted um maternity leave because the contention was that her terms of contract didn't allow for maternity leave that she was um not necessarily a regular, regular employee employee of the government of punjab in which um this uh in this case a justice muzammil akhtar shabir of the lahore high court held that based on um domestic legislation and once again pakistan's international obligations maternity leave is a fundamental right which cannot be um uh, derogated from and holding while saying this he basically placed reliance on um article 35 of the constitution which um mandates the state to uh, provide protection to marriage and family and then article 37e which mandates the state to provide uh, maternity benefits then uh, he also looked at you know um article 14 which provides the right to dignity article 9 which says you know nobody will be deprived uh from their life save in accordance with law and article 11 for labor so he basically held that you know if women are not provided maternity leave that's a violation of their right of dignity um he also said that you know um that if you force a woman to work during their pregnancy then that also amounts to forced labor so that's you know necessarily a very very powerful statement coming from your um from the high court so in that sense it's a very it's a very progressive judgment because it looks at your constitutional scheme it looks at your domestic legislation and then it looks at your international obligations as well and holds that a mater- maternity the right to maternity leave is fundamental and its nature and it cannot be derogated from so when we look at courts um our courts have also you know uh, been progressive early we have been very progressive in interpreting the right to maternity leave so i think we're necessarily when we talk about this issue we're on a good right trajectory and hopefully you know things will improve overall with more pieces of legislation coming in punjab kpk and balochistan